ladies and gentlemen. So my name is Danais Leon Potolinka Disperlinga. I am the International Association of Cigar Sommelier Certified Instructor and Ambassador for Europe. Thank you all uh, the participants for joining us today in this special event where cigars, tea and whiskeys and more will be paired and enjoyed. This event has been organized by Arturo Fuente Cigars International and the International Association of Cigar Sommeliers. The International Association of Cigar Sommeliers is an organization dedicated to train hospitality professionals regarding cigar tastings, pairings by becoming first a cigar sommelier. Through our court, Miguel, can you see me? Yes. Okay, I thought that it was gone. That's what I'm, I ask you because no. I cannot see. Don't so, worry. Okay, so um, as I was saying, through becoming a cigar sommelier, though our courses are available to all of those who wish to learn how to achieve the most advanced sensorial experience while smoking a premium cigar. From our International Association of Cigar Sommeliers here today, we have two graduates, Ms. Q and Mr. Robert Abreu, who will introduce themselves now. Thank you very much. Thank you and good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, Robert Abreu, uh, USA, in, uh, up in the Northeast in Jersey, um, certified master cigar sommelier in executive bourbon steward and a Scotch whiskey, certified Scotch whiskey master. Um, glad to be here today and looking forward to hearing from, from my friend today. Ms. Q. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Miguel Macias. I'm the executive director of the International Association of Cigar Sommeliers. And Ms. Q? Yes, uh, Ms. Q. Ms. Q is one of our graduates in China. She is an expert on teas. She is uh, the um, managing director of the Force and Cigar Club in the southern China. She is also vice president of the International Association of Cigar Culture, who is the association uh, in charge of deploying all the cigar sommeliers training in Macau, Shang and Macau, Hong Kong, mainland China, and Taiwan. Thank you very much, Miguel. Uh, so now we are more than delighted uh, to announce that we have with us our co-host of honor. He doesn't need a lot of introduction. Mr. Jose Blanco, Director of Sales of Arturo Fuente Cigars International. Thank you very much. Please. It's a, it's a pleasure to... Uh to be here, I'm, uh, I'm very honored. I've heard so much about the association, uh, the work you've done. And I have to say, without mentioning other associations, there's some associations that they say they do this, they do that. But at the end of the day, when I talk to some of them, uh, I see that's not really the work that should be done. I think you guys are very professional. Robert Abreu, I can testify because for years, I don't know the drinking part because I'm not a good sommelier, but I know when it comes to tobacco, he's been in Dominican Republic, he's been to Pro Cigars, he's seen my seminars, he's been to La Roya, he's been to many factories, he's been to the fields, he's seen rolling, blending, and all that, he's very curious. And he's always trying to pick my brain, and that is something that I like very, very much. Uh, with you, I've seen you interact. That's, that's, because, that's because there's a lot to pick there, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of knowledge. In there. <laughs> with Danais, uh, I've been, uh, I saw her, pro, uh, uh, her show with Umelio the other day. Then I talked to Umelio that I've met many, many years ago in Cuba, and I follow his career. And I have to tell you, I take my hats off to you. Outside the back connection we had to Cuba was a very interesting uh, conversation. You handled yourself very professional with a lot of respect. And uh, I have to say, I take my hats off to you because you did a great job. Thank in you. my Thank case, you so in my case, Jose Blanco, anybody who's in the cigar business has known me for 30, 40 years. I've worked with Aurora many, many years, master blender, sales director, vice president of Hoya de Nicaragua, vice president of Ernesto Perez Carrillo. I've had a very more than almost 35 year old relationship with Calito Fuente, with the Fuente family. Uh, I consider Cynthia, Liana, Carlos III, the kids, everybody more like family to me. So to me, it's an honor. I'm excited to be with the Fuente family. And 
later on we'll talk about because people only see the glory of the Fuentes. But people have to remember this company has been around for 108 years. But they got burned out in Nicaragua twice. They got thrown out of Honduras twice. They went to hell and back. And only the persistence of a man like Don Carlos could hold that company together. And today, it's probably the biggest family-owned corporation with amount of cigars made that it's all sold out and we're in back order. But it's not the amount of cigars you sell. It's the tradition, the consistency, the quality. Those cigars will never be sent out before they have their aging. And anybody who's toured our facilities in Santiago have seen tobaccos that are four, five, 10 years, 15, 18 year old for special cigars that Carlito does. And the funny thing about this, that's contrary of other companies, those very old age tobaccos sometimes are just set aside for charity. Because one of the most important things for the Fuente family and the Newmans is that foundation. So I'm very happy to be with such a prestigious association of cigar sommeliers, which I have the most utmost respect, even though I have to say that I've had sometimes uh, exchanges with them. And I'm not going to say that I disagree with some of their comments, but what I try to teach them, and I'm not a big drinker, is that taste is subjective. Whether you're smoking or you're drinking. So I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much. We are more than glad to have you here. It's a great honor for all of us, honestly. So, um, Mr. Jose Blanco, we'd like to please uh, make a, just a presentation of the cigar that we are smoking today, please. Okay, the cigar you're going to smoke today is the Eye of the Shark, five and three quarters by 52. It was the cigar of the year for Cigar Aficionado. A lot of people got to remember that Don Carlos line started many, many years ago, I think 1985, 1986. But during the years, Don Carlos made a lot of adjustments to it, just making it better and better and better and better all the time, adding different sizes, different concepts. But the eye of the shark, I mean, was a masterpiece. I think from what Carlito and some people told me, I think it was like maybe one and a half to two years working on it. But if you look at that Cameroon wrapper combined with that Dominican binder and fillers, it's rich. It has nice sweetness to it. It has a nice spice, has a nice earthiness. It's very balanced. It's very complex. It's what we call una fumada redonda. It's a round smoke that's going to hit you all over. And it's a cigar that we have to say sometimes there's yeah, a cigar you smoke and you say, I'm done for the day. But that's a cigar that you smoke it. I wouldn't smoke it back to back because I never smoke cigars back to back. But if it's my first cigar of the day and I smoke four in a day, I might want to end the day with a Don Carlos with maybe a nice shot of rum and maybe a nice scotch. And Robert knows this because a lot of people ask, I'm not a big drinker. One or two shots of rum, one or two shots of scotch, and once in a blue moon, a beer. But uh, the cigar is, is amazing. It got recognition worldwide. It was a very limited edition. But to be honest, in my book, it's what I call a memorable smoke. That's great. So I would like to um, add something before we start talking about uh, the cigars and the pairings, and is that when pairing drinks with cigars uh, in the association, we like to divide the cigar into three thirds and taking into consideration the flavor, strength, and notes of each, then we choose the drinks with similar characteristics to, to pair. And having said that, briefly, uh, I'd like to, to start with uh, the first third, so is Miss Q, please, would like to explain to us his suge her suggestions about uh, the first third. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear now? Yes, we can yes, hear. Yes, we do. Okay, all right, now. Okay. The number one cigar in the 2017 C.A. Rinkers, we feel that is 
layering and flavor are outstanding. The Chinese tea country has a history of thousands of years and the flavors of different types of tea in China are so different. In China, many cigar smokers drink tea while smoking. So we have our own experience in matching Chinese tea with cigars. Today, the taste of the third, first part of this cigar shows that we feel more comfortable with Chinese poor rye tea. Yeah. The poor rye tea is secondary fermentation tea. It has one more process than the common tea in the production process, which makes its taste more gentle and smooth. With the first part of the eyes of Sa, there's similar breaking and slight smoke. It will help to open up our taste box while slowly move to the second part. Thank you, Q. So, Robert, please. Oh, okay, thank you. So, so I'm, I'm approaching it from the, uh, the spirit section. And when I pair a cigar, especially when I pair Naturo Fuente, um, my, my thing is to include the romance of the cigar, the story. And, and Jose alluded to the family's history uh, in, and passion and fighting adversity to continue bringing us fantastic cigars for, for over 100 years. And that includes fires, wars, the to, as they say, and and that helps to enhance kind of the, the understanding and the experience that that and the love that's put into the stick that's brought into our hands. So so as we look at this first third of of the eye of the shark, um, I when I was putting the pairing together, I, I did kind of an east meets west um, theme. So I, I would start this first third with. Japanese, a Japanese whiskey, the, the Hibiki Harmony. And, and the reason for that is the, the cigar starts off on the kind of the, the uh, low, not lower end, the, 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 the less strong or the milder end of medium. So it's, it's in the medium, but we start off a little softer in that medium range. And, and this goes very well with, with this whiskey. So the, the, the Hibiki um, is made in a style very, very similar to uh, scotch. And, and I would also then go into the story of, of how um, whiskey was brought from Scotland to, Jap uh, to Japan and, and, the, and just how the style is similar. So if you're a scotch drinker and you've never had a Japanese whiskey, give it a try. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. And for me, it's, it's the notes. So, so this cigar, we start off with uh, oak. Uh, I find a little chestnut. Um, some black pepper starts hitting us. And when we have this, this whiskey, which has kind of a similar um, type of flavors, uh, we get a little bit of the soft honey, we get the wood. Um, it, it's very nice and mellow on the palate and really complements the, the cigar, which is the key when we're doing any pairing. Uh, you can have contrasting flavors, complementing flavors, but the balance that's the important thing. And I think uh, as we start off this, this beautiful stick, this Hibiki Harmony really, really goes well. And, and um, I don't want to sound kind of corny, but it does create a harmony with the Hibiki Harmony. So <laughs> let's uh, go ahead, nice. That's great. That's great, Robert. Thank you very much. So uh, before we continue, we'd like to explain to uh, all our friends who are here with us that uh, please send your questions and questions will be answered at the end uh, of the uh, explanations. So I don't know if Mr. Jose Blanco has something to add in terms of the characteristics of the cigar, if he wants to say something regarding... No, I would like to say this. Uh, I respect sommeliers a lot, but Robert said something very interesting a word that goes a lot to when we're blending, especially cigars at Fuente, the word harmonize. People sometimes that smoke cigars 
because harmonizing on, I would say in spirits, a little bit different than from us, because sometimes we're working on it. With whiskey, you have solids that you know what you're going to do with them. But with tobaccos, it's different because of the crops, because of the percentages of the ligero, the visos, the medio tiempo, the, whatever you're using. So sometimes, you know, we're working on a blend and sometimes you have the flavor is good, the balance is good, the aroma is good, but you sense after you put those cigars to age for 21 days, 30 days, 60 days, that you obey the tobaccos are good, but they're not harmonizing a lot. So I think that Robert touched something that I think you guys should really insist on it to really educate people because you could have a drink you're enjoying, but is it really harmonizing with the pairing? And I think that's the, one of the most important things. And like I said, and everybody knows this, I'm not a big drinker, but when I have it, I like to have something nice. And the state of mind that I have will determine what type of cigar. But I think so far the explanations have been uh, very, very, very clear, very uh, educational for people. Because sometimes a lot of sommeliers, and this is not criticizing anybody, use some words that I got to go to the dictionary and to see what are they trying to say. So I've always said that it's not that you're, everything is gonna be, all oh, it's good, it's bad, it's this, that. You have to more or less explain things for people. But sometimes the language has to be, as we say in Spanish, tiene que ser muy llano, has to be very clear and some very understanding. So that's my two cents on that. Thank you very much, it's true. That's the, that's the idea, just to, to help people understand uh, certain things and how uh, help them also to enhance the experience by knowing the, the cigar they are smoking, but also the drinks that they may pair. And always take into consideration that for us, the main figure in all this is the cigar. So everything that we prepare, everything that we find just to enhance the experience has to go around the cigar, which is the main and the most important uh, part in all this uh, experience, as I said before. So um, I don't know how advanced you are in your cigar, if you have, are already uh, past or close to the second third. But before we start with the next recommendations, I would like to explain that alcohol is a better dissolvent uh, for smoke than water. So that's why it uh, allows to enhance experience and by bringing out notes not possible to taste when drinking water. And in regards to water also, we like to recommend, uh, in this case, when uh, pairing sparkling water. Sparkling water, when pairing, is uh, very important because of the cleansing and refreshing effect on the palate. And also temperature is something that has to be taken into consideration. We also recommend not to drink water at very low temperatures because it will numb your taste buds. So you won't be able to appreciate the notes of the cigar or the other uh, drinks that you may uh, have. So this is just a few quotations. I don't know if Miguel wants to add something in regards to pairing in this uh, sense. Yes, I, I would like to, to uh, elaborate a little bit on the, on the tea section because uh, in, in, in the Western part of the world, were used to have this little tea bags like the European uh, British teas. When we talk about Chinese tea, it's a, it's a completely different way of, of preparing, a, di a completely different way of enjoying. Uh, it's not only the variety of the tea, it's also the infusion of the tea. Because sometimes you can have a special, a special Chinese tea that you infuse in hot water for 10 seconds. And then you have the, exactly the same tea, but with an infusion of 20 seconds, and then with an infusion of 30 seconds, of 50 seconds, 60 seconds, and it, 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 it will evolve the same way as a cigar evolves. So sometimes when people say that tea is not a, a, a good pairing, uh, I like to, to take them to that part of the, of the understanding of the process. It's actually a great pairing because there are very few products that's, that can evolve with time, as, such as the cigar. So when you have a, a cigar and you are adding a different tea and you are adding more seconds of infusion of that tea, uh, you are actually getting a very nice um, 
I would say, uh, experience on your palate. Also, the tea has the characteristic of being, can be either a cleaner, because if you're using a white tea, it will help you to clean out your, your taste buds, your palate. But also, if you are using a, a more um, fermented or, or dark tea or, or more like concentrated strong tea, it will be also a very good uh, balance with some, with some of the cigars. It has tannins, it has some uh, herbal notes, it has some very specific flavors that are very appealing to the cigar. And, and in this part, I, I would like to, to, I completely agree with, with uh, Mr. Jose. Sometimes our fellow sommeliers, uh, they try to get the most, I would say, uh, complex word or the most complex uh, way to describe a flavor. Uh, and they fight between each other if, if it tastes like uh, this kind of good or this kind of good. Where actually that is just a reference. It comes to our memory and it's very nice because when we do this trainings all over the world, we see that what a, what a person can get on terms of a tasting notes in Spain, it's completely different of what someone can get in China because the, the, the diet in China is different. The kind of food in China is different than in Spain. So everyone will have different kind of, of, of memories and everyone will have different kinds of flavors and that's fine because the objective of having these flavors is not to, to solve a test or, or is not to, to, you know, to, to, to get an extra point on, on something. The idea of getting this specific tasting notes is for you to elaborate or to recommend or to, to define which is the best pairing and also for you to collect on your, on your um, cigar logbook if that was a, a, a cigar you enjoyed or not. So sometimes uh, when, when we go into the Chinese tea, it's very interesting because you can find some flavors that at least for, for us that live in the Western part of the world, we're not used to. And that can be very refreshing and that can be very useful when you're pairing with, with cigars. Thank you very much, uh, Miguel. I totally agree with that. That's uh, why that's our part of our philosophy in the, the association. Uh, then I just wanted to show. I don't know if the, the ones, the other ones, which are just uh, smoking the same cigar, so if they can see uh, the ash of the cigar. So uh, I think that Jose Blanco may have said something about the construction of the cigar. For me, it's just an indicator of a perfect construction and quality. Also, the ashes. I don't know if he's. Uh, Listening. Yes, 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 of course. You know, it's uh, interesting that you bring that up because on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, when people tag me, or even if they don't tag me and I see an ash like that, I tell them it's two things. It, it, look, it, there's basically three things the ash will tell you a lot. It'll tell you a lot about the soil. It'll, an ash to get like that, second of all, it's great construction because it's not a hard cigar to make. But the most important thing, it's good old age tobacco. The Eye of the Shark, I might be mis mistaken, but I think the fillers and binder and that, I think are six to seven years old. For you to get an ash like that, it's, combination of, it's basically a combination of two things. Like I tell you, the ash will tell you a lot, the magnesium and the nitrate that the soil has. But when you have an ash like that and a, hard, and, a, and a very hard cigar to make, it'll tell you it was a good roller and good old tobacco. And remember, the cigars made of when they're all entubado, the old Cuban style. And later, if you want, we could talk a little bit about that also. But uh, it's, uh, it's nice to see an ash like that. Certainly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jose. So now uh, I think that we can just uh, talk a little bit more about the uh, second, third. So Ms. Q, please. Thank okay. You. In the second part, we found that it was upgrade to a higher level uh, of the taste and the flavor. At this time, we will we come on using Chinese, another tea, its name is rock tea, to try to match. Because the 
capacity of this tea is higher than before. At a high level, the aroma of rock tea is rich and known, and raw tea is stronger. The layers of tea flavor is richer. It can be well integrated with the eyes of the shark and will not cover each other. There will be no confinement and the mouse will get a rich feeling of satisfaction. Thank you, Q. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Q. So, Miguel, would you like to add something in regards to the tea or it's okay if we just continue with uh, Robert? No, it, it's okay. Just, just uh, I will, I will put on the on the um, chat for everyone. The um, I would write down the names of the teas because I guess you can uh, mostly find it in specialized Chinese supermarkets, so you can try to get it. Okay, thank you very much, Robert. It's your turn. Thank, thank you. Thank you. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, my, my theme was uh, East meets West. And for the second third, I'm using Legent bourbon. It's Kentucky, a Kentucky straight bourbon. And it has an interesting story behind it in that this is a collaboration between uh, Fred Noah of Jim, Jim Bean and Shinji Fukuyo of Centauri. So they got together and, and Shinji is the master blender while Fred is the master distiller. And they got together and put these, um, these different bourbons in um, their regular oak cask. Some were finished in wine casks and some were finished in also sherry casks. And Shinji went about to blend this, uh, this bourbon, giving us a, a somewhat unique uh, bourbon, so it's it's a little bit a um, little bit lower in alcohol at uh, 47 ABV than some of the other bourbons you might come across, but it, it actually drinks uh, smoother than that. So you know, as as we're hitting the second third, uh, what we start getting is is um, the oak seems to become more like cedar. So we start um, getting. Uh, the, the, the black pepper might increase a little bit, but there's more creaminess to it. So we wind up now getting these rounded, and, and Jose men mentioned it earlier, about the rounded uh, cigar, the well-rounded cigar that the Eye of the Shark is. And, and I think this bourbon really winds up enhancing those rounded flavors because it's bringing, again, some, some rounded uh, notes to it. And, and I mentioned earlier the, the importance of having balance between... The, the main character of the show and, and the supporting character, which is, which is what you're uh, accompanying or pairing it with. So for me, I just find that this is a, a great combination. They work so well off each other and, and really just helps enhance the experience. And um, I, I want to quickly mention something that, that Jose um, said a little bit earlier at the start and, and how Yes, the, the flavors, the notes that you get are completely subjective. If, if I get turmeric from a cigar and I ask you if you get turmeric, but you, never, you have no idea what turmeric tastes like or smells like, you're obviously not going to be able to get those notes. Um, and, and similar to, to Jose, I find uh, um, some, especially wine sommeliers, who will tell you that this was picked on a Thursday after 2 o'clock by a left-handed person. Come on. <laughs> it's just you know full of shit there's no other way to put it and and um the, the goal of of helping uh, everyone enjoy the experience is what we're really trying to do and not necessarily holding people to this is what you should be getting but but really trying to find ways that that will help enhance the experience which is why i think we're learning the stories of, of the things that we're pairing it with and the cigar itself and learning about the Arturo Fuente family and um, is just so important um, as part of, of your smoking experience. Indeed it is. Uh, I have to say something because I don't know if Robert's been a good student, but he's paid attention to a lot of people he's talked to. I know he's interacted with a lot of people in the industry 
and I know he's been very close to you and you're a professional what you do. But you said something that I have said during years of doing more than 1,500 blending seminars in more than 25 countries, and probably I visit 52, 53 countries. I, I still have a lot on my bucket list. You said what people, what was it? What people, you want them to believe what they're thinking. Again, taste is subjective. All of us have a tolerance scale that goes to, from one to 10. I could go to the factory, the same with Carlito, Cynthia also, seven o'clock in the morning after coffee and toast, have a full body cigar and we'll be at ease. There's people that will go out and eat a 24 ounce steak, two big Idaho potatoes, three bottles of wine, and you give them a mild cigar and they go, oh, 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 oh. it's strong. No, the cigar is not strong. You have a tolerance scale that's very, very low. The other thing is that people tend to confuse flavor with strength. So I don't know because I am not a sommelier. I don't, maybe when I'm 110 and I have a little bit of time, I could get some lessons from you and Robert and some other people. But I can tell you this, I don't know how much emphasis you guys put on the tolerance scale because that's why I'm in a room with 20 people and this guy say, well, I'm picking mild to medium this, but I'm being the other guy say, no, you're full of ass. Blah, 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 blah. And then they even start an argument about that, which I'd say, yo, 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 calm down. You're all wrong and you're all right. And they look at me and I says, because there's, you, you guys are going to smoke now in the seminar, the same cigar, 20 people. How many opinions am I going to get? You're going to get 20 different opinions. So at least I can tell you, like, again, I'm not a sommelier. I'm not an expert on wine or beer or rum, anything like that. But in our industry, the tolerance scale plays a big role. So that that Robert said, people, you want them to believe. I can't remember the exact word you say. You just hit it on the nail. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Jose. Thank you very much. So I just wanted to show something to you and uh, if you can just tell me what you think of this. So because uh, That's one of the best things you could see in a cigar. Yes. When you knock off the, uh, the, uh, the ash and you see that like little corner, that little cone, it tells you the construction was perfect. And later on, we can talk about construction why canoeing, why uh, tunneling, why you see some cigars that you will see the wrapper going faster than the binder. And I'll tell you why that happened. So uh, let's go. And that cigar, uh, it's not because it's Fuente. If it would have been another cigar, I would have given my compliments to it also. For sure. It's a great cigar indeed. So, well, uh, Miguel, I think that uh, we can just uh, continue with our suggestions so we can just have all the... Um, Jose Blanco's explanation for all of us at the end. So I'm pretty sure that people want to know also a little bit more about aging, blending, fermentation, all that, which is great. So we also want to, to have or make another suggestion for our third third. So if Ms. Q could please uh, tell us. I think out of China people, love the cigars and why pairing because this kind of pairing is an established model uh, insists in their minds but however in china uh, another drink nice tea um, brings us uh, uniquely enjoyment uh, it makes people feel calm and comfortable. Uh, tasting cigar is like tea tasting. Um, it's so this Chinese style pairing has already um, penetrated into our daily life and has become an 
inseparable existence. Um, entering the third part, the performance of the home cigar has been really reflected at this time. Our mouths have also become uh, become time. So we may to use another tea to prepare. At this time, we recommend using back tea. Um, back tea is a kind of tea with a long history in China. It has a long fermentation time. Uh, pure aroma and strong taste. The biggest feature is the um, sweet in our salt and long aftertaste. It would preparing get three strength taste of cigar. So, um, so must try rice the mouse um, can steep can stimulate uh, saliva and stop acidity so that we can get a we can get a perfect end okay thank you very much miguel would you like to add something in that regard Yes, yes. I, I think that Q just mentioned something that it's very important uh, when we do pairing with, uh, with teas. As, as you were saying, our taste buds, uh, what, what we perceive as a flavor is not actually the smoke or the food or the drink. What we perceive is the combination between our saliva and whatever is in our mouth. That's, that's the what our mouth perceives and that's what our brain transforms in a flavor. So as you were saying before, our saliva is water. So some of the components of the smoke are not soluble in water, but they are soluble in, in alcohol. So when we add alcohol, we can get new uh, flavors that originally you, can, you couldn't get. Uh, what happened with the tea, the, the, especially this uh, tea that, that uh, Q was saying, um, is that it stimulates the, gener the let's say, it, it stimulates the saliva, the saliva in our mouth. There are some uh, kind, there are some products that whenever you taste them, and actually some kinds of tobacco, and maybe Jose will, will tell us about this later, some uh, kinds of tobacco stimulate the generation of saliva, but tea also stimulates the generation of saliva, specifically this kind of, of tea, that is the black tea. So if we add black tea, what we're going to have is we're going to enhance our capacity to create saliva and so to understand better the flavors or to get better the flavors. So when we have this tea, in combination with the cigar, in combination with maybe an other spirit uh, that we could use, uh, the recommendations that, that Robert just said, can simply make easier to our mind to get the different flavors. And uh, I guess it's a, it's a very interesting exercise. Uh, there's something that we also call like a conscious smoking. You know, you're sometimes you go with your friends and light up a cigar and start talking, but you're not being conscious about the flavors. And that's fine because it's also a social product. But if you want to have a gourmet experience and actually get everything that you can get from the flavor of this product, if you add some other, uh, let's say, enhancers, such as the tea, as the coffee, or as the spirits, you will definitely have a nicer experience in terms of, of uh, taste and aroma. Thank you very much. So I think that uh, so far we have our suggestions uh, in terms of uh, thirds. And uh, I don't know if uh, Mr. Jose Blanco wants to add something before continuing with uh, his explanations about 
I, I, I like to add something. Um, I, have, I think I have a very high tolerance to smoking cigars. I'm used to smoke very uh, powerful cigars. I even can smoke more than one uh, in a row, you know, two or three depends on the occasion. But I have to say that this is a very powerful cigar. This, this cigar is very powerful. I can, I can feel it. It's advancing, but it's really intense. Yes, very it's, intense. A great, it's, it, it's a great cigar, but look, Miguel said something very interesting. And you know, at my age, uh, and I'm not making notes because I'm taking care of like 10 things at a time, uh, paying attention about the saliva. And this is very interesting, and I'll tell you why. And I know we have to still hear from Robert on his last third. There are cigars, yeah. and it's basically the wrapper that I am spitting constantly, constantly, constantly. And that will be a once in a blue moon. But it's something on cigars, it's not because, like right now I'm having coffee. I'm having coffee from Kenya, which I love but I'm not salivating a lot, I'm salivating a little. But there's some cigars that it's, that I, I seem like those old guys in the Western movies just spitting all the time, beep pop, beep pop, beep pop, beep pop. And, and that also is the type of smokers. You have smokers that are dry smokers. They're uh, smokers that are between dry and wet. And then you have smokers that are also totally wet. It doesn't matter the cigar because they saliva a lot. Plus, there's a lot of people that will stick that cigar all the way back in there, which that's more the, the old timers, the new generation, the 20 to 30, the 40 years old will just keep a cigar more or less like here. But it is true. Some, some cigars just make you salivate more than other cigars. I don't have a scientific explanation about it. I should really ask. I'm the first one that uh, uh, I question myself on some things. And like a lot of people say, oh, you're a guru, you're a professor. And I said, listen, I've been smoking for 54 years, whether I'm in Nicaragua, Honduras, Mexico, Dominican Republic, or in Cuba. I'm still asking questions, and I learn every single day. It's true. That's, uh, we're, all, uh, we're all eternal students, all the time learning. That's, uh, that's how it is. So Miguel, I don't know if we, you would like to add uh, something else before we continue. Uh, no, 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 I'm fine. Maybe uh, Robert is, is uh, going to do the, the last recommendation, I guess. Yeah, yeah I'll, do my, I'll do my final third. So, so just as, as a quick review, you know, I said we, the, the cigar starts off on, on the milder side of the medium scale. And we started off with the Hibiki Harmony from Japan. And then as the cigar became more complex and the body and strength built a little bit, we went to Legion uh, bourbon, right? So it's uh, American whiskey, it's a bourbon. Uh, it's like Legion, Legend, but with a T at the end. Then to, uh, to finalize, um, in keeping with that theme, um, I went with a Dalmore 12, which is a single malt scotch. So, and, and what I like about it is as the cigar has now built up in strength and we're on the other end of the scale and, and build up in flavors, right? And, and Jose mentioned that there's a difference. You can't assume that strength equals flavors and you can't assume that a lot of flavors equals, equals strength. They're, they're kind of independent, although they're, they're like primos, they're cousins. Um, but but there are there is a difference, and as we get to this final third, what I'm getting is um, that that woody cedar has really kind of built up. So we get a lot of that. We get earth. Um, we we get some maybe a little bit of raisin and and just some really well rounded notes, which really is it goes well with this with the single malt scotch. Um, the Dalmore 12 is aged uh, nine years in a an ex bourbon uh, cast before half of it is taken out and then aged in sherry cask before they're put back together. So we get very nice rounded um, notes. We get some nuts, we get oak, uh, cinnamon, um, but again, not overpowering the cigar, but really complementing it. And, and that's kind of my, my trifecta there of, of a pairing. 
And, and when I do a pairing, I also kind of try to bring it back to the cigar. And um, although, uh, for example, that Turo Fuente is, is steeped in tradition, um, they're constantly being innovative and, and coming up with new things. And, and I think um, it, it's really interesting, um, and, and I'll just quickly mention it, um, the, the, the Arturo Fuente family, as Jose mentioned, um, steeped in tradition from, from Don Arturo all the way to, to Carlito. And, and, but what strikes me as a father of, of daughters, four daughters, um, the amount of involvement and, and um, the, the girl power with, with Cynthia and Leanne really helping drive the company to me is, is fantastic. And that's my pairings. <laughs> <laughs> Very Thank true. You. The, uh, uh, you know, anybody who's seen the show that we do, and uh, we have a big audience for that, we've brought in some great people, uh, George Brightman, Cynthia, Liana. We brought in the Tuchrent. We brought in uh, Gordon Mott. We've had, uh, uh, I mean, some amazing families. And Nesto Perez Carrillo, at the end of the day, it's all about family, family, family. Indeed. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to uh, say something. It's just uh, before we continue is that I just saw uh, I'm, I have been also tasting here because sometimes just to arrive to the good experience of a nice pairing takes time, takes uh, no. Do you hear me? Yes, we hear you now. Okay, thank you. So I was saying that it takes time to to arrive to the to have a nice pairing. So it takes knowledge of the cigar, it takes knowledge of the drinks also that you're going to be pairing to, to get a nice experience. And uh, that's precisely the, the, the role of the cigar sommeliers, right? That's why we insist on studying in learning and also in just uh, conveying this information to everybody to be able to get the most out of the experience. So in my case, since this is not uh, a prepared uh, tasting or I mean pairing. So I just got, I'm in Romania this moment and I also like to support uh, the local uh, business and uh, also to know the local culture. And uh, I just got this, which is a wine uh, spirit. And it's made here in Romania, it's an XO. And it has a very nice notes for this uh, third third also. The, the cigar is really powerful and very intense. But now in this third third, with this uh, spirit, with its note, which has uh, vanilla, has is kind of mellow also. So it helps to round up the smoke and to make it nicer. So this is just... Uh, a little comment before we continue. I'm really enjoying this third third with this uh, Saria. The nice, there's something I would like to say because there's a, something that a lot of consumers do not realize. In my opinion, state of mind is one of the most important things. What you eat, if it's hot and if it's cold. And I'll give you an example. Let's say you're enjoying a cigar and the temperature is 70 degrees, and you smoke two inches of it, and all of a sudden, because whatever is happening in the house, you have to leave the house, and you go outside, and it's 100 degrees, and you start to sweat. All those notes of sweetness, nice spice, that you were thinking are totally gone. But let's go on the contrary. It's 70 degrees, and all of a sudden, you have to go out, because it's 20 degrees outside, or let's say zero, and you're freezing and you're shaking, all of a sudden, that state of mind that you have is totally gone. And that is something that a lot of people do not take in consideration. So my personal opinion, that one of the most important things, I'm talking about evaluating and enjoying a cigar that you have safe for a special moment, the state of mind plays a very, very big role uh, when you are enjoying that cigar. Even though it could be the greatest pairing in the world, but if you're not comfortable, if it's hot, if it's cold, 
if you ate, let's say, a spicy Thai food, unless you cleanse your palate, and I've always said to cleanse your palate, in my opinion, the two best things are club soda, because of all the alkaline it has it, and the old Cuban way, which is milk. And when I say milk, a lot of people say, like, really, milk? So if you haven't tried it, if you had a day where if you smoked a lot and you feel that your palate is kind of numb, take club soda and have it, and you will see how your palate is totally cleansed. Yes, uh, that's why we just uh, mentioned at the beginning that uh, sparkling water is an option. And uh, also, it's very important, the role of water in pairing. It's, uh, if we come from having a lunch or dinner, very spicy, like you said, so we are supposed to use some sparkling water just to cleanse the palate before starting to smoke and to pair with another drink. It's necessary. It's the same like when we are about to finish the smoke also, we can also use the sparkling water just to refresh the palate. Because some, we know that at the end of the smoke, we can have our uh, palate, it can be a little bit saturated from a lot of uh, flavors and uh, the intensity of the what we are smoking and drinking. So it's very important to, to drink water. And we also, we recommend to have a uh, sparkling water. Also, it's very important, the role of water, because it's, it's, it's a need for the body to keep hydrated. When, when we smoke, we dehydrate, um, not in a great stent, but it happens also when we drink alcohol. So that's why it's so important to drink water, to keep ourselves hydrated. So we also have that. Uh, but you mentioned something in regards to the, the state of mind, and probably Miguel will want to to say something about that, because that's one of the principles of pairing in our association. Yes, yes, yes. We, we always want to, to separate between what is like the pairing. Uh, and of course, pairing is something subjective. Uh, if you like to pair your cigar with a uh, Diet Coke, that's your taste. It, it, it's okay. I mean, it's your pairing. It's very subjective. There is another kind of pairing, though, that, that we always say that is the gourmet pairing. There are some, uh, I, I wouldn't say rules, but guidelines and some enhancers, tools that will help you to get a more gourmet experience. And we normally try to, to teach on that. But there is also something that we, we always say that is the emotional pairing. And sometimes you enjoy the emotion of pairing so much, even though this emotional pairing is not uh, or cannot be a very gourmet pairing. And I will, I will make an example. If, if you are in the, in the Dominican Republic and uh, you are smoking a Dominican cigar and they give you a Dominican rum, and you are, you are, let's say you are in Arturo Fuente Cigar Lounge in Santo Domingo and you get a nice Arturo Fuente and you get a, a nice uh, uh, Dominican rum and you're living the experience because you don't live there, it's only on vacations. Maybe if you ask for, for a professional, let's say sommelier recommendation, there will be plenty of, of options. You can say the whiskey or cognac or maybe a cocktail or whatever, but being there, and having a Brugal and a Presidente is so emotional that you will enjoy so much that that's a good pairing too. You know, it's uh, the, the, the emotion, the history behind whatever you are smoking, it's as important as the, the um, let's say, the technicalities on it. Of course, there are moments for doing uh, the different kinds of pairing, but yes, uh, I, I completely agree with, with what you guys were saying. Uh, the, what is in our mind is as important as what is in our mouth. Yes, indeed. So what uh, Mr. Jose Blanco was saying before also uh, about the state of mind is very important because it has been proven by scientific researches that research that when you are, let's say, that stress or in a distress situation, your perception, for instance, of the bitter taste is higher than when you are not in that, that situation. So we have to take all those things into consideration if we want to smoke and to enjoy that. Sometimes people, they just uh, may think that, oh, the cigar just got bad or it's not so good. And we, we need to differentiate that from our state of mind 
our emotional state that may affect also the way we perceive flavors and aromas. I totally, I totally agree. And Miguel made a good uh, comparison about it. And uh, like I said, that is something in my seminars and in my teachings and education to people. Because uh, there's people that tell me, uh, look, I'm, I'm, I smoke a cigar like in the office where I could smoke. And I know I like the cigar, but it doesn't taste the same when I go home or I go to the cigar lounge. So what is it? Is there something wrong with me? I said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. You're totally normal. Now, if you would say that it would happen constantly everywhere, then you, you're the person who has the problem. And that's why I say, and it's very important what you said on ice, because this has been scientifically uh, proven, not only related to drinking, eating, and smoking, it has been even uh, studied results by big corporations that are now uh, outsourcing a lot of, not outsourcing, letting a lot of people uh, work at home and it has been proven they are more productive. So I agree 100% and I wish that all our listeners, and I know that you guys are emphasized that a lot during your uh, teachings to people to always remember the importance of state of mind. That's very good. Thank you very much. It, it is true. It is true. So take, keep that in mind. It's very important to enhance your, your enjoyment of a cigar or a pairing. So I think, uh, Miguel, that uh, on our side, if there is uh, something else uh, to add, <laughs> I, uh, would you like to add something else or Robert or Miss Q? Not from our side. Uh, I think that... Uh people is, is willing to ask questions. We have already received a couple of questions, but there is an, a question I want to do by myself to, to Mr. Jose. Uh, and I, I maybe would like, if, if, if Q and Robert don't have any further comments, I would like to start this, this Q and A with uh, one of my questions. That is, um, Normally, the shape of a cigar can also influence the smoking experience, right? If you have a thicker uh, cigar, you will have more smoke. If you have a figurado, you have a different flow with smoke. The shape of the eye of the shark is something magnificent. You know, it's like a, a box press plus figurado, not too short, not too long. So. Uh, I was I was trying in my mind when I smoke it to see what kind of experience I got. And it was nice, but I couldn't describe it. It was, it was very, very interesting. So I would like to have your, your insights on, on this, Mr. Jose. That's a, that's a great question. And uh, it's something that, uh, to be honest, I've been very, uh, in my beginnings, very uh, estudioso uh, about it because people don't realize that you could have X cigar made round, let's say a five by 52 round and do that same five by 52 box press. And this is what could happen. Let's say it was phenomenal as a round Robusto. And when you box press it, it can become even better. But sometimes during, because the flow of the tobacco is different, can totally change. And on the eye of the shark, Don Carlos is a great cigar. It's the same recipe, the same thing. Maybe, maybe no. The fact is they used a little bit more aged tobacco because it was a very special cigar. But definitely the shape of the cigar will change the flavors. You could take a Diadema Fino, a Salomon, a Lance, uh, those two cigars and have, let's say, a Churchill, someone by 47 or by 50 because everything has changed. And you will see, even though the fill of the binder and the wrapper are the same and the tobaccos are exactly the same, the cigar will totally uh, smoke different be because of the way the tobacco flows. Uh, I think that answers your question. I have, to, I have to give a big shout out to uh, probably one of my best friends, Mr. George Hartman from California. I'm seeing him there, sitting there. He's a good friend. He's been to a lot of my events and my seminars. He's a brother, he's part of the, uh, of the group of uh, Life is Good with a lot of good friends. And he is a uh, very hardcore, passionate cigar smoker. And I think he knows a little bit or two about 
uh, having a good drink also. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Jose, and hello to everybody. I hope you can hear me. Yes. Uh, yes, we hear you, George. Okay. Uh, well, Jose, I just always follow your first rule when it comes to my state of mind smoking a cigar. You remember your first rule of how to enjoy a cigar? Well, the first rule is try to avoid smoking and next to an asshole. Right. <laughs> so I always follow your rule. And, and that usually helps my state of mind. But uh, I'm so happy to see your face. It's been a while. And I, um, and I find the conversation very interesting. And I just bought a box of uh, Mirafel Cameroon wrapped uh, Fuente cigars while I was listening. I'm looking forward to smoking them. Take my word, you're going to enjoy it. And you have a good palate, uh, George. And I know that you're all over the place and uh, you've been very supportive of the industry and the brick and mortars and anything that has to do with our industry. You've you, I know you have fought a lot, you know, supporting uh, the industry and with the FDA. You have put your two cents in it to, and us as an industry, we appreciate what you've done for us and uh, overall your friendship and your kindness that you've always had towards me and my family. And uh, I really appreciate it. You're a true, passionate brother of the leaf. Thank you, Jose. And love to you and Emma and Jasper. And uh, I'm just going to sit back and listen to all these lovely people talk. Thanks, George. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So I think, uh, Miguel, that is, uh, if you want to, to continue yes. with some questions. There's a question, and this kind is for Robert. It says, Robert, do you have any tips on what to look for in a spirit? Sorry, in a spirit? If you know the flavor profile of the cigar, but maybe don't know much about the different scotches or whiskies. For example, if I have a cigar, I know it's medium strength and taste of leathery, earthy pepper notes. Should I ask the spirit seller for someone, something more floral, peaty, etc.? Are there any common types of flavor profiles that match one harmoniously? If I can kind of wait on that question, because my landscapers are here, you know, the joys of being outside. So all the machines are going, so I'm sure there's a lot of background noise. So, uh, so if we can come back to that. But since I have the microphone on, um, Jose, if I can ask you a question to tell uh, all our friends the impact that the wrapper has on the cigar. Thank God that you asked it, because I was going to, I always bring it up. To me... In my personal opinion, it's one of the greatest misconceptions that smokers all over the world have, the impact of the wrapper. I'm going to make it very simple. Let's take a Robusto 5x50 with a Connecticut wrapper on it. The overall flavor and strength of that, depending on the priming, is going to be between 20 to 22%. You take that same Robusto 5x50 and you put a Corojo Ligero bind, uh, wrapper on it, it's going to be between 55 to 60. But you take a Lancero, 7 by 38, and let's say you put a Havano Viso Ecuador on it, it's going to be 75 to 80. It's the ratio of filler to binder to wrapper. People think in their minds, the bigger the cigar, the more flavor, the more strength. No, it's the proportion of the amount of filler that... Uh, that you that uh, of wrapper that you have and what i've told people some people you know they say well that's not true and i said this is very simple take whatever line of cigars you want smoke a lancero or maybe they don't have a lancero but take a five and a quarter by 42 corona smoke it first cigar of the day make notes on it now take that same cigar in a six by 60 and smoke it and you're going to tell me there's no more in there's not more intense flavor than strength in the smaller ring gauge. Then they get back to me, whether it's an email or Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and said, you're absolutely right. Thank you for clarifying that for me. Thank you very much. So do we continue with the questions, Miguel?
we we can't hear you. Sorry. Okay. There, there is another question that uh, Oscar uh, Marulanda is asking. Uh, what kind of cigar to start with tea? Uh, and also if green tea is possible. I, I would take that. Uh, green tea is a little bit more challenging for, for smoking cigars. It's not so good as the, as the other teas. Maybe if, if uh, you want to compliment on, on what I'm saying. Uh, but on terms of the others, let's say if, if you want to go for the more traditional uh, black tea, that will be easily paired with almost every cigar. The, the tip here is, is what, what I was saying at the beginning, is how to prepare the tea will give you the, the, the infusion time will give you the concentration you need for a different cigar. If you're going for, let's say, a, a more um, a lighter cigar or um, mild to medium cigar, you may use uh, small cups with less infusion time and that will help. If you are going maybe with a strong cigar and you want to have a little bit more tannins into your, your pairing, you will need to have uh, maybe a biggest, uh, it's the same, a biggest proportion of, of uh, tea versus water and a higher infusion time and that will give you a more powerful tea. Okay. Thank you. If I can just quickly mention something as far as, as teas, um, for those that, that do like Arturo Fuente, um, one of my favorite, favorite uh, morning pairing is Yogi tea. You can get it at the supermarket here anywhere. Uh, Y-O-G-I, the stress relief um, with a, a Magnum R, an 858, delicious. Hello, Oscar. Hello, Oscar. Hello, Oscar. I turned off my mic real quick. Uh, I know we have somebody in the audience that uh, I think she should just come and, and say hello, which is a dear friend. Uh, and just say hello a minute. The Queen of Cigars, Miss Cynthia Fuente. Cynthia, could you just come in a minute and just okay, cool. give a big salute to these guys here? There she is. Yes. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome. How are you? Hello, welcome. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Oh, it's an honor. I, it's been such a wonderful and an interesting show. It's like with tobacco and uh, spirits, there's always something to learn. And I personally love teas. So it's been so inspiring to be able to hear all the different teas that I can enjoy with my cigars. That is great. Yes. Thank you very it's much. very interesting. Thank you. And, and no, I, when I heard that Jose was going to be on the show, I definitely wanted to listen in. And thank you for the great comments. Uh, the cigar industry has always been surrounded by many wonderful men, but women have been a part of this industry since the, the very beginning of time. So I really appreciate uh, the beautiful comments. And thank you for guiding us. You're a beautiful lady yourself. And uh, uh, this is a great industry. And it, and it does pair with so many beautiful liquors and so many beautiful teas and i i've really really i've learned a lot which uh, i'm going to be experimenting with my cigars as well thank, thank you, you i i think that we could uh we could uh later on after the show i think that uh cynthia would be more than happy one of these days uh, to be on the show as cubana igual que tu and uh yes she yes. would be uh she has a lot to talk about. I mean, uh, a lot. I mean, amazing. So I think she would be a great on the show. She has a lot to share. And I love to see the part of the woman in the industry because uh, she's, she's not only the queen of cigars, but uh, she's a great person. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. And it would be my pleasure. I, I, I would really enjoy that. Oh, my God. I can't it's believe it. Show. Thank yes, you very much. Absolutely. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for your words. Thank you very much, Jose Blanco, for this uh, suggestion too. And I will be more than glad to have you. Of course, it's it's it, it's it's done. It's a fact. Thank you. For sure. Well, we're, I'm always ready. I I I've been in this industry all my life, and I'm so grateful and blessed. And 
And we, we love it. Like Jose said, I mean, it's just part of us. It's part of who we are. So it would be my pleasure. Thank you. Of course, of course. You're an inspiration, so it's very nice, very nice of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, all right. All right, enjoy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, if, we, if we continue with, uh, I'm pretty sure yeah. that uh, some people, they just want to listen to Jose Blanco again. He has so much to, to tell us, right? Yes, so, yes. Yes, he does. Okay, uh, another great misconception that people have is judging a cigar by the color of the wrapper. And I always tell people that. The greatest misconception that people have is when they see a dark wrapper or maduro. What does maduro mean? It just translates to ripe. It's the fermentation process that we do to the wrapper just to unify the colors of it. The way we do it in the majority of uh, the old companies and traditional companies is just water, and heat and a long fermentation process. Now, when we talk about fermentation, it has also a lot to do with the crop. Let's say that one year we have, let's say that one year we have a crop that it rained a lot. The leaves are gonna be very big. They're gonna be very thin. They're gonna have, they're gonna be very light color. They hardly have any oils on them and the, vo the veins are gonna be very thin. The fermentation process on that is gonna be at lower temperatures and a short period of time. But let's say we hardly got any rain. The leaves are gonna be very dark, very oily, very thick, big veins. The fermentation process on that could reach, depending on the type of wrapper, filler or binder, can go up to 120, 130 degrees and it will be a long period of time. So, but let's go to the curing. People talk a lot about blending and fermentation, but they forget about the curing. But let's go before the curing. If you pick the leaves before they're ready to pick, it doesn't matter how good the curing and the fermentation will be. They will be sour, they will be bitter, they will taste bad. But let's say you pick them too ripe, it also is going to affect. So when you're doing the curing fermentation, that's going to be between 42 to 45 days. It's all going to depend on the priming and the type of tobacco also. If you have a very dry condition, we have to bring water into the curing barns to get away with the humidity. But also if it's very, very dry, you also have to bring, no, if it's very dry, you gotta bring in water. But it's very humid, you have to bring in buckets of water to, so the humidity can go up into the curing barn. Because if it doesn't have uh, any type of uh, humidity, when they're taking down the, uh, the, the, the leaves, they're gonna totally crack. So that also is important. But at the same time, let's go to the fermentation. If you under-ferment the tobacco, you're gonna get that nastiest, sour, bitter, metallic taste to it. But if you over-ferment it also, the essential oils, which is really where the flavor is, they're going to totally disappear. So it's an art. It is something that you have to be very careful because if you do not do it correct, you will not have great cigars. That's how it is. Thank you very much. So, Miguel, I okay. You, uh, you actually, the nice uh, my 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 landscapers left, so I can answer that question finally. <laughs> so, um, I, I know the question was in reference to if you know the cigar that you're getting, kind of how do you go about thinking uh, about what to pair. Um, and what notes to look for. Yeah, there's, um, and I alluded to it earlier, there's, there's kind of two ways that we can look at a pairing. One either is to have them complement each other or have them contrast each other. So if you have a very earthy, grassy, um, not many um, sweet notes uh, to a cigar, you know, you could either do a very light whiskey, uh, maybe something from the space side, it's a little more floral, a little lighter. Um, 
or you can do something from, uh, like if we stick with a scotch or a bourbon, uh, either something from the Highlands or a bourbon, which has more rounded, sweeter notes, and you're kind of doing a, a more sweet to less sweet um, uh, contrast or, or complement. But the, the trick is always to look for balance. So for example, and again, and, and Miguel mentioned earlier that when we look at pairings, we can provide guidelines and what we would look for in a gourmet pairing. But at the end of the day, if, if you like a Dr. Pepper with, with, your, with your king tea, hey, more power to you. But um, as far as, as a pairing, I would uh, not necessarily recommend, if you're looking for a pairing, uh, a very light, very mild cigar with something like a Lagavulin 16, which is a very peaty, very woody, very smoky, because now you're just drowning out the cigar. And we have to remember what we mentioned at the top of the uh, presentation, that the cigar is, is the main event in your pairing, and you're really trying to find ways to, to enhance the, um, the, that smoke and enhance the experience. So, so the trick is always looking for balance in, in what we're, we're trying to do, but then kind of figure out what you want, either contrast or compliment. I want to say something because you mentioned two things that I've done in my, uh, I've said in my seminars when people ask me about pairings. The only way I'm going to have a, uh, uh, a diet Pepsi if I'm in the desert and I'm going to die because I'm not a fan of it. But that said, I have people that for years I've known, I trust their palates. I've had them on smoking panels that will smoke three, four cigars a day. And the only thing they do is drink diet Pepsi or diet Coke. You pair up with what you like because at the end of the day, it's what makes you feel good. Now that said, I know that from, from professional sommeliers, like some of the ones that we have here today, you could really get guidance because I think what happens with a lot of people, they have not had the experience of that. And I do have to say the sommeliers are more, how would you say, well-known, well, known, well uh, uh, into it more in Europe than in the States. Because in the States, we have sommeliers, but we have to be honest. We, for every sommelier, I think I could be mistaken that we have in the States. I think in, in Europe, we have to have a, a, a hundred at least of them. Because I interact with a lot of them. And I'm glad to see that Robert and a lot of people in the States are taking these courses and uh, making themselves really uh, professionals. Because to be honest, and I'm going to say this with the whole truth, I can never be a sommelier. I could be kind of a, maybe on a scale of one to 10, a one, but to be a professional sommelier, I have to admit, I don't, uh, I don't think I have it. And, and a lot of people have said, look, all the descriptions you give on cigars and all that you could be, but I'm just going to stick to cigars for a minute and my coffee and a good rum and a good scotch. So I'm going to leave that for the professionals. <laughs> Thank you very much. But coffee is a great uh, uh, pairing for cigars also. Coffee My favorite. Is a great pairing. And chocolate too, you know. So some people, they just uh, haven't tried that yet. But uh, just to pair just a spirit with a little piece of chocolate, let it melt in your mouth and then try the spirit, then try the cigar. You will enhance that experience a great deal. So I encourage all of you just to do that and you will see that's uh, a great experience. Of course, we are not talking about probably... Um, chocolates with a great amount of uh, milk or anything just uh, let's say for this third i i was just uh, trying 80 percent in this case it's 82 82 percent but around 80 for a third third in a cigar like this one which is a powerful cigar might go very well with a uh, spirit and uh, one of the things that um, robert was saying to keep balance Either it is by contrast or by uh, complementing the, the product that we are tasting is very important. So one simple guideline that I always uh, keep in mind and I tell people to keep in mind too is just to go by the intensities. So it uh, doesn't make any sense just to pair a mild cigar with a very intense drink or with a dark roast uh, coffee or with a very uh, high percentage um, chocolate. So just try to keep that in mind so you can achieve a very nice uh, experience. Miguel? Uh, oh, sorry. Please. No, no, please. no, Miguel. 
No, I just want to know if there are questions that probably for you. Yes, there's there's one general question that I, I will also would like to share my opinion. That is, uh, what are our suggestions for getting younger generations into cigars? And uh, I, I personally think that Fuente is, is reference for, for one of the things that I will say. I, was, I, I think that the younger generations are interested on, on different kinds of, uh, they're not consuming the same that the older generations. For many years, the cigars became more like a status product, uh, even though they are a gourmet product. The cigar is a gourmet product. I guess this generation is more focused on the experiences, on, on the flavors, on, on being able to understand something that is gourmet and taste it and go for more handcrafted products. And that's a huge opportunity for cigars. Having said that, I think that there's also another very important activity for the whole industry. Uh, I'm not sure if I will say it uh, with the correct word in English. I don't know if the word exists. I, I know it exists in Spanish that this demonizing the industry, right? Uh, that, like uh, we're, we're the, the evil part of, of, the, of the business, the tobacco, the cigars. And uh, when you see what for example, Fuente is doing on terms of social responsibility, on working with the communities, on helping the people in the Dominican Republic. I, I think that I barely know big companies that are more, let you, let's say, responsible, that do so much for the community. And I, I guess that's a great example. And that's something that, that it's, it's not only for Fuente. I mean, we, we get to work with a lot of producers and all of them are very responsible with their employees, very responsible with the communities. And it's something that I guess that if, if we as an industry can share for the younger, the younger generations, that it's a handcrafted premium gourmet product that is also responsible with the communities, uh, we will get a, a huge impact in the younger generations. Uh, but I would like to, to, to have your opinions, too. Listen, when it comes to uh, the foundation that the Fuentes and the Newmans have done, uh, a lot of people do not realize what that community used to be. There were no schools, no roads, high, uh, how would you say, delinquency. And when uh, Carlito started to go there, the kids would chase them and they all wanted to work there. And the parents would say, well, we don't have any schools or anything for them to go. And then the foundation made the first uh, uh, rooms for them to study. But then they started to add more and add more. And then when the kids finish uh, eighth grade, so, there's no schools closed. So Carlito and the Newmans took a loan of a million dollars and they built the high school. That foundation has graduated entrepreneurs, doctors, lawyers that have come back and given something to the community. And when we, you see all over the States, Toast for America, every single penny goes back to the foundation. Carlito and Cynthia and Liana have done events in Michigan where they have raised three, four, five hundred thousand dollars and not like some of these foundations that 90% goes to the employees. They do not take one cent out of that and everything goes into the foundations for all those people who have uh, supported uh, Toast Across America and have given money to the uh, foundation. We thank you for that because you have made a better life. And I want you to know that it, uh, the foundation has received international recognition for the work that has been done that. So I'm very proud to have been friends with the, friend, uh, with the Fuentes for many years. I visited the foundation many times. I've seen what has been done. And uh, I can tell you in Dominican Republic, it's unique. 
I'll, uh, I'll, I'll kind of take a stab at that. And, and I agree, Miguel and, and echoing Jose's sentiment. Um, a younger generation is interested in corporate social responsibility, right? And, and um, when, you're, when you're a company, you're not just a, a building in the community, um, but a true, a true company, a good company sees themselves as a member of the community and, and the Fuente family um, along with the Newman family have um, always uh, really uh, brought that to light with the foundation and, and I've been there and it's a very interesting and unique place and, and I've been to the one of the New York fundraisers that we did over at um, the, uh, at the top of the sixes and knowing that every penny of that, of that ticket went to the foundation is, is great. Um, but uh, your point, Miguel, the, the younger generation, I think, doesn't really understand, uh, sometimes don't understand how um, their, their purchase uh, is, is supportive of these companies that do support their communities. Um, I, I also think um, that a, a younger generation, um, noting that they are looking for more complex and more interesting things to smoke. And, and this eye of the shark is, is an example, right? Just the, the, the look and the taste is, is um, one of those things that, that people are, today's consumers tends to look for, which is why I was saying that it's a company steeped in tradition, but, but always looking to evolve and try new things and new approaches. Thank you. I I uh, yes, Miguel. Sorry, sorry. I, I received another question, but if, if you want to ask. No, 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 no. I mean, what Robert said, and uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's been uh, great. I don't know if Cynthia wants to add anything to it, because uh, to be honest, she has been involved just as much as Carlito to it. I've just, I've just been part of the, uh, of the family, but I think that uh, Cynthia could add to it. As far as the foundation? Of course. The foundation? Yes, yes. Well, we, um, from the very beginning, the, uh, we always have been in a family that has been brought up with very little. And uh, so we know what it is to come from nothing and to, to uh, through hard work and perseverance to be able to make it to where we are today. And um, being in the Dominican Republic, because my father was in Nicaragua and my father was in Honduras and he lost both of the factories that were burned down to the ground, one by a accident and another one by the revolution. So when he decided that if we were going to be in the cigar industry, that he would need to go to the Dominican Republic or another country and... And so he decided to go to the Dominican Republic because it was so much like Cuba, where his ancestors came from. And the soil, the fermentation, the climate was very much similar to like his, where he grew up, how he grew up. So um, after being in the Dominican in the 80s, we seen the poverty was just so sad. And in the early 90s, when we started the creation of the Fuente Fuente Opus Sex, we seen that these children were all around the foundation, the, the farm, and they, they only had one school, and it would go up to sixth grade. And after that, the other schools were so far, they couldn't further uh, their education. So the Newman family that we've been in joint venture with since the 80s, and the Fuente family, we decided to try to make a difference to that country that had been so good to us all of these years. We wanted to give back to the Dominican Republic. And we've always been brought up in a family that even if you didn't have anything, whatever you had, you wanted to share to try to make something better for somebody else. So now in the foundation, we have from preschool to 12th grade, and we have over 500 and uh, approximately 25 students now. We are very, very happy to announce that we have a new technical school because a lot of these children, they were graduating from 12th grade because it goes from pre-K to 12th grade. It first went from pre-K to sixth grade. And then there was really no place for them to be able to go. So we started a middle school. Then we moved up to a high school. 
So uh, we have had, these children have gone from pre-K all the way to 12th grade together. And uh, so then they didn't, uh, many of them went to college, approximately like 80%, but there were some, not everyone could go to college. So we built a brand new technical school. So this is gonna help like nursing. And uh, we have a gentleman named Nelson Suarez. It's a beautiful testimony because he always dreamed of being a doctor, but he would never ever have a chance uh, being from the area that he came from. So we helped him, he went to the university and he became a neurosurgeon. And we always had a philosophy that we would like to teach these children to have an education, but to be able to want to come back and give back to their own community. Now, Nelson is a doctor and he's come back. We have a medical clinic, a small medical clinic, but he has come back to help. And he's helped so many people in that community. And he works together with the university in Santiago. So we have uh, uh, now administration, we have an accountant, we have people actually that are coming back to our factory in Santiago and helping us work there. So uh, we offer martial arts, basketball, dancing, all kinds of sports. So it's a beautiful community. And like uh, Jose has said, that uh, people from all over the world have helped us. Uh, once you contribute even $10, you become part of the family part of the Cigar Family Charitable Foundation because the Newmans and the Fuente undergo all the administration costs. So every dollar donated goes directly to our children. So that's a beautiful thing. And they know that people like you are what's making a difference in their future. They're happy children. They're grateful children. So it's the most beautiful, beautiful uh, organization and we're so proud of it and it sits very very closely to our birthplace of a dream Chateau de la Fuente so if you're able to go and visit it that we hope that anybody that would love to see it it is really an experience to be able to see the children to be able to see the farm and where we grow our tobacco, it really is a paradise. So we welcome you all if you ever have an opportunity. We're very, very proud of our school and uh, we're proud of what the children have to offer and, and, and their tomorrows are very, very bright, very bright. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, thank yes, you, thank absolutely. You, thank you very much. Thank you very much yes, to you yes. for all that hard work. And it's very nice to hear that thank when you. you feel blessed, you share that with others, right? Yes, and absolutely, a hundred percent. Yes, yes, and we and do help very well. Yeah, that's yes. very important. It's very important. <clears throat> very nice. I'm gonna wrap up with the. Uh, I mean, if there's more questions, but there's two things that. Uh, I, uh, I have a. Right? I have a quick question, Jose. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. I have a quick question for you. Uh, as someone who who smokes multiple cigars a day, what's your favorite cigar of the day? Look, you're not gonna believe it. People ask, have asked me all over the world, what's my favorite cigar? I do not have a favorite cigar. And it's, to me, has to do a lot, the mood, state of mind, what I'm really into it. Uh, I start off, I'm probably totally different from the majority of smokers. I start off very heavy in the day. And I'll probably, at the end of the day, uh, finish off with a medium body cigar. Unless I'm doing an event, I will not... Uh, smoke late at night. I do, I start off 6, 6.30 in the morning after I have coffee and, uh, and toast. Then I'll have a cigar around 10, then I'll have one around two, and then I'll have another one around four. But I don't have a favorite, uh, a favorite cigar. And I've, everybody knows I've worked with a lot of companies, but I can tell you one thing. Anybody who loves Cameroon, but remember Cameroon, grown by the Metafels that are the true growers of Cameroon wrapper in the world. There is no better cigar than the Don Carlos Robusto Reserve. I had the pleasure of, of uh, knowing Don Carlos when I would go to the factory. Uh, our late good friend Samuel and Carlito would give me that, that cigar. And Don Carlos sometimes when I was picking people up at the airport, the first thing he would come out and ask me, Blanco, do you have a lighter? and I would give him a light, he would light up, and he would put in my pocket his personal reserve. To me, 
That's a God does not have any comparison in the world with a cigar that has a Cameroon wrapper. People have asked me all the time, uh, and I've been saying this, anybody who knows me for the last 25, 30 years in my events have asked me, what's the best rapper in the world? Or my favorite rapper? I've always said, Cameroon, grown in Africa by the Merafeld family. Because there's people who allege they grow Cameroon. Yeah, it's the same seed they use in Cameroon. But if you grow it in Nicaragua it does, and, or in Ecuador, it doesn't have the spice and the sweetness that true Cameroon has. So I invite people who have maybe not had a cigar from Fuente, or let's say another company that uses a uh, Cameroon wrapper to try one, because it's just amazing, the flavor and the notes that you pick up from a Cameroon wrapper. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Miguel, I don't know if you have any other questions from the, the audience. Oh, we, we cannot hear you. Okay, there you sorry, are. Sorry, sorry. Uh, no, there, there's no more questions. I don't know if uh, Mr. Jose Blanco would like to add something else in regards to the cigars in general or any process or anything before we- Yes, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna say one last thing. Uh, when, you're, when you're blending a cigar, there's six elements you have to look for. The first thing is flavor. Then you look for strength slash body. Then you look for aroma. Those three things, I'm not going to say it's the easiest thing to get, but they're not as complicated as the next three things. Then after you have flavor, strength, and aroma, you have to look for complexity, which to me is one of the hardest things to accomplish because I don't care how good a cigar is, if from start to finish it's the same flavor, the same strength, the same notes, it becomes a good boring cigar. Then after you have the flavor, the strength, the aroma, and the complexity, you have to look for balance. Balance is like a musical note that you have to have total stimulation in your mouth. And it's one of the hardest things to get. And then the last thing is finish. Sometimes you hear the reviews, the cigar was mild to medium, it was spicy, it was earthy, and it had a long finish. And a lot of people think you have to smoke the whole cigar to determine the finish, and it's not true. Half an inch into the cigar, you're gonna know if it has a long finish, a short finish, no finish, or a bad aftertaste. When do you know a cigar has a great finish? When your lips are tingling, you have total stimulation and balance in your mouth, and you do not want to let go of that cigar. So those are the six elements that a blend needs to have to be a winner. And what happens sometimes is, and I'll give you an example when it comes to balance. How many times have you smoked a cigar two inches into the cigar and all of a sudden it goes flat? And people ask me, what could have happened? I said, it's very simple. Not simple, but this is the truth. Let's say you have a roller that's working with four fillers. And let's say that he got distracted and he repeated one of the fillers or he did not put the leaves in the proper position, then that could unbalance the cigar. And the second part is that the guy who did the, uh, the uh, La Liga, who did the blend, did not do his homework. <laughs> that is great, it's, it's great to know. So uh, Miguel, uh, do you have any other questions from the audience uh, before we finish? Yes, yes. I, I received a question, but it was on, on directly on my WhatsApp for a student who is asking uh, why is, uh, is, is, is more a technical decision to roll all the, all the cigars um, in an entubado style or is more a decision that will trigger some effects on the flavor? Look, it doesn't matter if you do estrujado like a lot of companies do in uh, Nicaragua, which is they uh, use entubado, the, the ligero or the viso, or like at Fuente and the old Cuban uh, style as you do entubado, or you do the book. At the end of the day, it's the construction, the supervision, the quality control, and most of all, the tobacco. Personally, I am a big fan of entubado. 
and the Fuente, all the cigars are made in Tubado. It's harder to make because you've got to roll up every leaf and just imagine a cigar with four fillers and everything is just like a little straw. Put that in a top of a binder, press it, put it in the press in the mold, leave it 30 minutes, then turn it around again and then come out and put that wrapper on. At the end of the day, we do it in Tubado. Some other companies do it. But I firmly believe in Tubado is the best way to make a cigar, but at the end of the day, if a cigar has a good draw, if it burns well, if it has good tobacco, that's what we really need. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I, I just, uh, before we finish, I would like to ask something about aging. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> I, I really lo love uh, aged cigars, right? And uh, I don't know if you could just uh, elaborate a little bit more about the Asian, because I know one thing is just to age the tobacco and another thing is just to age the cigars. So could you explain a little bit about this? Uh, then I, that this is, is amazing. That is a great question. And I'm gonna clarify some misconceptions that people have about this. And I don't want anybody to take anything wrong. I see people that put away a mild cigar, it doesn't matter who makes it. A mild cigar already is gonna lose in time of four, five, six, seven, eight years. I recommend to age cigars that are medium, medium plus, even one that could be mild to medium, depending on the type of wrapper and what company it comes from. And of course, full flavor, full body cigars. If they're well made, if they're, they have good aged tobacco, they will age in time. But that said, you have to look at it this way. I know people who buy very expensive cigars, have a great humidor, but they do not take care of it. They go on vacation for two months, they put a little bit of solution into it, they come back two months later and the hydrometer is already at 30. And the mistake they made is then they calibrate, put solution into it, get it up to 80. So that humidor is sucking up all that cigars are sucking up all that humidity. And when you light them up again, the majority of them are going to explode. So for those people, if it goes down, the hydrometer goes down to zero. To be honest, you're totally screwed. But let's say it was 35 or 40. What you do is... If it's at 40, you calibrate your humidor at 50, leave them there eight or 10 days. Then you bring them to 60, then you bring them to 70. You got to bring them back. Now, on aging, and I'll give you an example. I've seen on Facebook, people said, oh, I bought X, we never talk about brands, this brand of cigars, I left it there for three years. I smoked it, it was okay. I let it for three years. I smoked it again, it was terrible. Let me tell you this, a bad cigar with bad tobacco is going to be bad today, tomorrow, a month, a year, five years, 10 years, even if you have the best Daniel Marshall humidor in the world. Now, that said, you could have some cigars that you could pick up some youngness on it. Of course, if you put it away three, four months and you could experiment with this, you will see it will get better because maybe they rushed it, they didn't give it enough aging in the aging room. But bad tobacco, it doesn't matter how long you put it away, or a bad cigar, it will not get better. Now, you have a cigar, let's say it was made today, it arrived at the store, you picked it up. Let's say on a scale of one to 10, you always want flavor to be 10, even if it's a mild cigar. Let's say the flavor was 10 and the strength was eight, you put that cigar away for five years, that flavor is going to come down to seven, seven and a half, and that strength from eight, it's going to come down to six. You're, it's going to smooth, it's going to smoke a little bit better. You're going to pick up maybe some different notes because of the aging and the harmonizing of the tobaccos. But you have to understand that tobacco with time loses flavor and loses strength. But if you really want to keep great cigars in good condition it's not so much about the cigar it's all about the humidor and the way you take care of those cigars 
You got to take care of those cigars like you would take care of your children. And we all take very good care of our children. It is like that. It's like taking care of babies. So I, I consider taking care of the cigars like that. It's something that you cannot, you have to keep an eye on them all the time. Otherwise you may just uh, lose everything. It has been a great session, I believe. I don't know uh, what you think, Miguel. I don't know what you think, Mr. Jose Blanco, about this, but for me it has been a great session. I believe it's the same for the rest of the, the friends which are here with us today. If you want to add something else, uh, any of you or you, please, Mr. Jose Blanco, if you, you like to just wrap up everything, something you know, to me. Look, to me, it's been interesting uh, seeing my good friend Robert having Sydney on the problem, Miguel, that I know is very passionate. Uh, my good friend, George Hartman, that we've known for, for many years and many other people that are, that are here. I love to do these things. I'm a firm believer that the more educated the consumer is, the distributor is, the retailers are, it makes it better for, the, uh, for our industry. I've been, like I've said, I've been smoking for 54 years. And one thing that I always said in my seminars is uh, every time I start, if you're ever invited to a seminar, to a tasting, and somebody comes up and tells you he knows everything about cigars, because I would say 99% of cigar smokers are great people, you hear the guy out, but as soon as you get home, hit the delete button, he's full of shit. This is an ongoing process that you learn every day. And I'm gonna tell you the last thing. You know why this is the greatest industry in the world? Because you're not judged by the color of your skin, you're not judged by your religious beliefs, and you're not judged whether you're smoking a $5, a $3 bundle cigar, or you're smoking a $50 cigar. We don't care. You're gonna have the occasional asshole that uh, complains about everything, and like my good friend George Hartman knows, you gotta stay away with from them. I've learned a little bit about pairings. Uh, Robert, uh, I think, uh, did a great job yourself. I learned a little bit about tea. And to be honest, about tea I learned in my travels. Uh, I did a year of consulting for a, a company uh, trying to get into China. And I did seminars there. In the, in, I did in Thailand. I did in Hong Kong. I did in Shanghai with my good uh, friend, uh, Lily Wang. And even though I'm not a big tea drinker. I like iced tea. I know that's, it's not what we're talking about, but it was interesting. It was interesting to see how many places I went to and see Chinese people pairing up. Occasionally, I would say of 10 people that I saw doing pairings, eight were with tea. I was surprised and one or two with coffee. And uh, it was kind of shocking. I have to admit it. But talking about China, I think it's, uh, it has a great potential. Uh, I think with a little bit of education, they're very passionate about it. Uh, they, love, uh, they love cigars and uh, they spend money uh, on it. And uh, I was surprised when I went to Lily Wong's place that the uh, youngest scotch that she had was 18 years old, was 21, 23, 30 year old, 50. And I saw, when I say young, because I'm 70, guys that were 30, 35 years old, run up a tab uh, for three guys and a knife for $700, $800. And uh, like with a blink and a vi, didn't even uh, say anything. So I think they're passionate. But this passion about cigars, we got to be honest, it's all over the world. I mean, it's the greatest industry in the world. I've said to people, if I were to die and I go up there and St. Peter says, okay, Blanco, we, we want to send you down. What do you want to be, an artist, a painter? a writer, a doctor, a neuroscientist or something. I said, no, St. Peter, send me down again. I want to be a tobacco man all my life. I'm fourth generation. My great-grandfather grew tobacco. My father uh, grew tobacco. Uh, my cousin Hochi has been in the industry. And I would not change it for the world. I have the utmost respect for the industry, for my colleagues. I get along with everybody. Uh, we were at a TAA one time sitting a group of uh, manufacturers and uh, uh, Nimish Patel were talking about people. And uh, it was a compliment to me. And uh, he said to me, he said to the group, there was about eight or 10 manufacturers there. If you don't get along with Jose Blanco, you're the problem. 
because he gets along with everybody and I try to help everybody. And I have the utmost respect for everybody. When I go to a cigar store and I see a rep bad mouthing another company, I wait till they go outside. And I say, can I have a word with you? And they say to me, Mr. Blanco, what? I know you used to work with that company. They fired you. I don't know why. But all that you said about that company, you had 12 people in that store. Who says that all those things you said about that company, those people right now are not saying to themselves, who says that that company is not doing the same thing? I've always told the young salespeople, even in the stores, store owners, if you don't have anything good to say about a cigar, do not say anything. Because somebody grew that tobacco, aged that tobacco, made that cigar, and is trying to make a living. So please, do not badmouth the cigar. And the majority of them say, Mr. Blanco, thank you for that. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to change on that. So to me, it's, it's a great industry. I would not change it for anything in the world. Thank you for having me. Uh, I will send you contact for you and Cynthia to uh, get along. She's wonderful. She has a lot more to tell about the Fuentes than I do. But it's been a pleasure and honor. And I wish you guys continue educating people. Like I said, it'll, uh, I learned a little bit tonight about pairings. So uh, thank you very much for everything. It, it's been wonderful and continued success to you, to Miguel, to Robert, to our girls in, uh, in China too. So good night, buenas noches. It has been an honor and a pleasure. It has it's been, been a wonderful. Honor. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you. Very, Thank very you. nice. You. I enjoyed it. Thank you all. Thank you very much okay. for being here. Thank you very much for agreeing to do, to do this. And it's true that uh, cigars brought us together. And the idea of this is just to educate, but more than that, just to keep together the community and to perpetuate this industry that we all love. So thank you very much, Jose Blanco, for uh, just accepting this. Uh, say, thank you very much to Cynthia also for being with us today. Thank you. Have been great. Thank you. Looking thank forward you. to meeting you again in, our, in my thank live you. session. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very yes. much to Robert, to Miss Q, to Miguel Macias, which is our boss, to all of the audience. Thank you very much. It has been great.